Welcome to this week's guided coaching meditation. I've been talking to a number of people. I run sleep webinars and um, time webinars. And one of the reasons that people find that both can be affected is overwhelm. And overwhelm is caused by a whole raft of different factors. But the point is, how do you deal with it? Because invariably it's so insidious, you don't know it's a problem until it's a problem. So welcome. I just want to talk through overwhelm and what you can do about it and what it means for you. Overwhelm, um, I learned many years ago when I did a stress management course, was that it's your ability to um, cope with all the workload and responsibilities that you have. So it's, ev it's not even a reality. It's just your perceived ability. Something about you that says you can't do it. And when you understand that, that's good news. Why? Because now you've got something to look for, something that you can work with, something you can do something about. So in this session, I want you to find some calm and clarity that will enable you to recognize your own signs of overwhelm and when you start to see them do something different learn from it change the way you are so what sorts of um things are likely linked to overwhelm a racing mind it's interesting because a racing mind will have you jumping from one thing to the next to the next to the next and the reason for that is the deeper unconscious mind is worried you're going to drop something you're going to forget something this is still undone uh, you know don't don't forget you haven't finished this la 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 and that jumping from one task to another does not give your brain chance to process to understand where it is in what it's got to do so it will just keep reminding you a bit like a train on a toy track. It could be that you've just got a mountain of paperwork or a mountain of accounts and books, bookkeeping to be done for maybe many clients. Many of anything can give the feeling that you are feeling overwhelmed and that there's just too much on your plate to be dealing with. For some people, it could be the physical symptoms, such as tension in the body somewhere, your shoulders, your back, who knows. You may suffer more headaches than normal as you're struggling to keep everything contained and your breathing may change. It could become faster and shallower, a sure sign that stress is kicking in. One other side that you might notice overwhelm is your increases in irritability, some frustration with the fact that you can't get things done the way you want to. There's an outstanding query. There's something else to be done or just a sense of hopelessness about it all because you've been here before and it just seems to come back. I want you to know you're OK. What we're going to help you with today is to start to do some clearing of the dirt, the debris and the detritus that is not serving you. These are all common signs that you are experiencing a state of overwhelm. So just for the moment, just before we start, I want you to acknowledge those feelings. Put away any judgment you may have about what you should be doing, what you must do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They are rules that have been made up and are not necessarily your own, even though they may sound like yours. That's a, that's a video for another day. Just acknowledge how overwhelmed makes you feel. And if you can, at the moment, I want you to tune in to the state of overwhelm that you've got. It might be that busy mind constantly racing, particularly at two or three in the morning. It could be that you're experiencing physical um, uh, tendencies that are going on. 
or maybe there's a an emotional response that you're feeling it doesn't much matter but i just want you to get to no notice what overwhelm feels like for you what it sounds like what it looks like and if appropriate what it smells or tastes like and i know that's strange but for me when i was stressed i would drink more coffee that is a a, a flavor and a smell all in one isn't it and it's okay So once you've done that, I'd like you just to get yourself into a nice, comfortable position where you can sit or lie down, whichever works for you. And I know right now all that overwhelm is still going on. So the first thing we need to do is to get you into a calmer state. And one of the quickest ways of doing that is through your breathing, because that taps into your parasympathetic nervous system that is always checking out that you're OK. And it will be on high alert or higher alert. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold. And then slowly exhale through your mouth. I'm going to count for five and just see if that makes a difference for you. In, hold, exhale. Three, hold, exhale. Four, inhale, hold, exhale, letting your breathing become steady and natural as you take the last one in the same way, five in, hold, exhale. And I want you to continue at a pace that is comfortable for you going through this whole guided meditation. And if you forget, that's OK. But remembering to bring yourself back to your breathing whenever you find yourself wandering. So I want you to bring your attention to the sensation of your body touching the surface beneath you. Feel the support that it provides. And as you continue to breathe, deliberately, considerately, in a way that works for you, I want you to start to notice that breath filling up the top of your head. Gradually moving down through your head, through your eye sockets, jawbone, jaw, neck, and into your shoulders. This relaxation, just working its way back down through your arms, shoulders, chest and back, through your legs, all the way to your feet and your toes. Because as you settle in the, into this state of relaxation, which I wonder if you could double that relaxation at some point, maybe even treble it, I want you to imagine yourself standing in a beautiful, serene garden. The garden is your mind, filled with a variety of plants and flowers, or maybe for you, it's 
it's more um, decoration and social areas. But there's a lot of plants and flowers there as well. Some areas are vibrant and full of life, representing the key aspects of your work and personal life that bring you joy and fulfillment. However, as you get up close and look, you can see that there are also weeds overgrown and tangled. They've been left to their own devices to grow uncontrolled. These represent the overwhelm that you're feeling, the negative thoughts and the unnecessary worries that are cr currently crowding your mind in some way, shape or other. And you may notice how the weeds are choking the flowers, preventing them from flourishing, taking all the nutrients from the soil or all the, all the moisture. And what we need to do is something about it. Now, whether you're a gardener or not makes no difference because this is a metaphor for the mind and your unconscious mind will understand this. Because what we want to do is clear those weeds, that overgrowth effortlessly, easily, without struggle, no hurt, no harm to you. So I wonder if you could imagine visually pulling out the weeds one by one and piling them up somewhere. It doesn't matter where, where you do it. And you can do this easily. You don't have to make a, a big labour on it. You can just imagine that as you pass your hand over, each weed is, is pulled into your hand somehow, magically, perhaps. But notice, more importantly, how easy they leave the soil how they come out and they are ready just to be thrown away. And what they leave behind is a rich soil, which we're going to add some fertilizer to, to help speed up your growth in the right areas. Because re remember, these weeds are all the tasks that you've taken on for whatever reason. No, no judgment here all the tasks that have built up for some reason, all the tasks you have volunteered for. There's a whole raft of reasons we've touched on. All these weeds, somebody has to do them and that's okay, but you don't. And even if you do, what we want to make sure is that you get that done and then you never take them back on again. So pull them all up and put them in a pile or in a wheelbarrow, whatever works for you. They've come up really easily, so you can do that. Even as I, I finish this section, you can find yourself enjoying the, the time to clear the space. And I would like you to see some clear space. Because there's no rush. And that process of finding space in all the weeds is amazing. Because that space is your time that you can then allocate more purposefully to other things. Because with each weed you move, you can feel lighter, more focused and at peace. So once you've got all the weeds out, the first thing I want you to do is to now water the garden with all the nutrients that you need to make sure that the existing plants will do well, but the, the new plants that you'll put in, the new seedlings, the new trees, whatever you're going to put in, that represent what you want out of life. So if you want to attract more clients, have a plant that is attracting more clients and plant that in. Maybe you have a goal to run a marathon, plant that, running a marathon plant. And as you plant them in, water them in with this good food so that it can take place. Now, what you want to do is maintain the space between the plants. 
because as time grows on, they will grow and fill up the space. You never plant bulbs right next to each other, do you? Let's not do that with your goals and your ambitions and your dreams. Just planting what you want. That's right. Very good. And as you do that, know that you can come back to this garden and revisit this so you can plant more of what you want and weed the stuff you don't. Okay, as you plant them, notice that they become brighter. The colours that were already there are more vivid. This is your mind becoming clearer and more focused on what you do want. So, so important. I want you to turn a moment to the weeds. Now, some of these are things that still have to be done. So separate those out and just looking at them with plants, just spread them out over whatever period of time you think you need to do these. Now, a lot of things will need to be done yesterday. And quite frankly, that's not going to happen. But what you can do in your mind's eye is just imagine you know when you can get them done by. And put those in a different container. Now, you don't need to uh, throw them away just yet. What we'll get you to do is revisit this garden in a week's time so you can throw them out. But just imagine you just get them done somehow. It doesn't matter how, because when you come back into the now, you'll plan them appropriately. Those things that you have to do, just see them spread out over the course of, say, the next week, the next month, whatever. But they get done easily and effortlessly. And they are contained away from the garden so they do not reseed down there. You'll then have another load of weeds that you can give to somebody to do, delegate them. You may think that you can do this easily yourself, but we already know you've got way too much. So who could you delegate them to? And whether you get that answer right now or not, I don't know, but separate them out into another box and know that with some time over the course of the next month, you've delegated it. You do not need to do it. And as you delegate, make sure that that's something that's ongoing, something you can give over. These are tasks you can start to let go of. And then you'll have the ones that really, quite frankly, it doesn't matter whether they get done, tidying something up. And I know for some people this is really important, but put that in, in another box somewhere else. And I want you to put these three boxes out of sight because they're not for you in the garden. They'll get done. They'll get sorted. And I know if you're listening to this, your conscious mind's like, I can't let go. I can't let go. I can't let go. You can. In this way, your unconscious mind is learning the things that are truly contributing to your success. The things that are really going to help you move forward. The things that you can let go of easily and effortlessly. And if you can't, just create a box until you can. We need a clearer garden. And I want you to reflect on it at the moment. If everything in that garden is the most important aspects of your work and life, those tasks and goals that align with your values, then bring you satisfaction. Knowing that now you've removed the weeds that are just distractions, unnecessary worries and the things that pull you away from what truly matters you can start to breathe easier and in a moment as you prepare to come back to the present moment I want you to take one last look at that garden and sink even deeper into a place of peaceful knowing this is a space you can come back to when you feel overwhelmed to help you to sort out the weeds from the plants, the undergrowth from the, um, the trees that really make this space your own. Somewhere you can find clarity and peace when the time is frantic. When you're ready, bringing your attention back to your breathing. 
Notice any gentle rise and fall of your chest. Is that different from the beginning? You may need to listen to this again, and that's okay. Wiggling your fingers and toes. When you're ready, slowly opening your eyes, coming back into the now, knowing that you've started to cultivate the workload that you have. Knowing that just like a garden, your mind regularly requires care and attention. And it's okay to take the time to clear the weeds and nurture the flowers. Because by doing so, you can now create a space where you thrive, both pro professionally and personally. Thank you.